everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about inheritance in C++. We're going to talk about what it is, why it's good, and how you can implement it. So let's go ahead and get started. So what do we mean when we talk about inheritance? Simply put, we're talking about taking an existing class and then writing a new class based off of it. So let's say that I had a class named foo and class foo had a private variable x and as part of its public interface it simply had an accessor and a mutator for setting that x variable so let's say you know void set x and then I have a single parameter and then we're just going to simply set the private integer variable x to the parameter okay and then for our accessor we're going to retrieve that so we've got you know, something very simple and it works so this is our mutator and this is our accessor and no underscore here so this works now let's say that i want to create another class and in that class i want to have two integer variables and accessors and mutators for both of those well without inheritance I could write in a completely separate class and I'm duplicating all this code that's in here, essentially. But with inheritance, I don't have to do that. I can start with class foo and then create a new class and inherit everything that foo is. So I can get these functions here for free in my new class. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a new class called bar and I'm going to put this colon here and then I'm going to have a class access specifier. And I'm going to use public for right now. And then I'm going to specify, well, what class am I basing my new class off of? And that new class is class foo. So when you do this, you're establishing what's known as an is a relationship, the is a relationship. So class bar is a foo. And this relationship, you can refer to class bar as the child class or the derived class, derived class. And in the relationship, foo becomes the parent class, also known as the base class. So since a bar, class bar is a foo, then it's gonna get all of this stuff right here, all this public stuff for free. So when I want to add an extra variable, I don't have to write an entirely new class. I'll just do this. I'll say int y, and then as part of my public interface, I only need to add two more methods, one for setting the y here. So I'll have a mutator, we'll call it set y, and that's gonna set y to its parameter. And then I'm gonna have my accessor, and that's gonna return y. So mutator, and accessor. So class bar is a subclass of foo. Class bar is a derived class of foo. Class bar is a child class of foo. Foo is the parent class or the base class. So because of that, I can instantiate an instance of class bar and it's gonna have everything that foo has. So I can say bar b. And I can do something like this. I can say b dot set x, and then I'll assign it a value. So if you take a look at the class declaration for bar, you don't see set x. I didn't write a set x for bar. Instead, I inherited it from class foo, from my parent. So I get to use that automatically. All right? Then I'll do b dot set y which is the new function that I did write for class bar, and I'll set that to six. Now, that eight here is gonna be assigned to this right here, and then through this statement here, that eight, which is stored in underscore x, will then be stored in the private variable x that I inherited, and then same thing with, or similar thing with set y. The six is gonna be copied into the underscore y, and then from there, it's gonna be assigned to the Y here. So in this way, my new class bar is more sophisticated, right? It has all of this stuff, access to all this stuff too. So let's go ahead and test it. So we'll do B dot get X. See how no get X inside my class bar. 
it was inherited from class foo. So C out B dot get X and B dot get Y. So let's go ahead and run that, test it, prove that it works. Okay, there's the eight and the six. But this is a new class that is a child of foo. But foo still, it's the, we still have the class declaration for foo, so we can still create a foo as well. Right, so we've got foo, let's call that f, and then we'll do f.setx, and we'll set it to 88, and then we'll retrieve that um, 88, and then put that on the screen. So I have got two classes, one that's based off of the other. So this stops me from having to rewrite the same code in two separate places, right? I don't have to do a set X and get X and int X in here. I can take an existing class, which presumably was tested, works just fine, is a solid code. And rather than risking messing it up and rewriting it all from scratch, I could just take that solid code and then build my new class off of it. And with that, we have a basic introduction to inheritance with classes in C++.